So a basic summary of our game, Domino, is that it is a 2D side-scrolling stealth game with Afro-Swiss elements that challenges the player to carefully manage resources and to really make use of the environment and while they're making their way through obstacles and antagonists while being aided by, uh, you know, the Afro-Cuban gods that are the Alishas in order to save their mother. So uh, you just heard from Marissa um, about their new game. So can you tell us a, a little bit about who you are and so where that where where the game came from? So um, I'm Marisa Diaz, and or my team just called me Mari for short. I am the one of the artists and main narrative designer on the team, and also animator. Um, and I'm currently a student about to graduate. And where the game came from is, I think uh, it came from a pitch kind of idea Saturday where um, I had this story in work since, I think since I've joined Game Heads, which is a really great program for students of color, uh, especially high schoolers that are looking into getting into game industry. And I've just been, I think had this, I've had the story on the back burner for so long that I finally had the chance to do it with my team, which, you know, who are amazing. And one of them, they was an amazing designer, is it here? But we still love them. Um, I, I have plenty more questions. Um, uh, before I start there, uh, I'm, hey everybody, I'm Mike Acton and I'm here with, um, this great team, sort of trying to introduce you to this great team. We'll talk to each of them in turn. Um, and I'm also here with, again, with with Ray. Ray, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Ray Ray Graham. I'm the technical director at Unity on, on the Spotlight team. But I'm also a mentor and also a board member of Gameheads Oakland. And this is one of the teams that I mentored over the last summer. All right. So, um, so to get back to to you, Mari, um, what can you tell me? Um, what what do you think you learned about? Sort of what did you learn about development? You know what's what's important to development from from this game in particular? Uh, I think learning how to pitch your idea really well. <laughs> it's one of them. Um, but a lot of it uh, really depends on the environment and team dynamic that you create with you know the people in your group is just such it plays such a major factor to productivity and morale and just uh, you know whether you know contentment among peers. So you know people who work well together um, uh, make better make better work. Is, it, exactly. is that sort of, yeah? Oh, yeah. Um, like, uh, you, know, you ever done like a group project for a team versus like a, a project you do with friends? One end's going to like be enjoyment. The other one, you're just going to do it for a break. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay. So uh, I'd also like to uh, talk to uh, Rebecca. Um, can you Can you introduce yourself first? Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Rebecca Taylor. I'm uh, the programmer of Camino, um, and I'm also a uh, fourth year computer science major and uh, upcoming inter programming intern at Double Fine because that happened. <laughs> but yeah, programmer on uh, this game. Great. So um, before we get into what 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 you learned from the experience. Do you have any anything to show us? Yes, actually, some uh, gameplay of our game. If you give me a second. Um... <laughs> Uh, 
everything's good, right? Just making sure. I will say, this is one of my favorite animations coming up. Just that colonizer just dropping is just my favorite thing of this entire game. <laughs> So, can, can you tell tell us a little bit about what you took away from the experience? Um, I think my my main takeaway is um, kind of similar to Mario. Maybe drop the sound that. a little bit on the on the video there. Uh, that good? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think my main takeaway is similar to Mario's and similar to I feel like a lot of the other teammates in that like you need a good team in order to make something good which is kind of what we did um and also this was definitely at a time when all of us needed a strong friendship group because this was summer 2020 which is something of its own and i think it's just some a something that we all kind of needed and this is what you get kind of so you know you, you mentioned um you know that you feel that you need um what you said was you, you feel like you need a good team to make something good um and you know i think that the what you were getting at is not just that the the individual skills or the bench strength of the team is good but that that it's a team that the team work is good that, that you know the group can work together and and, and can uh, communicate well so what one uh, i'd like to come from that's true but two uh what if so what is it that what is it that made the team special um Honestly, I think it's because we've all, before this game, we've all known each other for at least a year prior. And like, we kind of, if, if not so much like, no, no. And like, we like know each other's personality, we know like certain aspects of their personality and can kind of, um, and like elevate, our each other's strengths and help prop up each other's weaknesses. I think that's kind of what made uh, this team. So what? Uh, you can probably stop sharing. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll share the we'll share the link um, so that everybody can take a look at your work. Um, but let's uh, uh, before we move on to the next person, um, I'd like to dig in a little bit to. Um, what you're saying with you know it worked because you were able to elevate each other's strengths and prop each other's weaknesses um if you had a if you have a concrete example of where that worked Is this question for any one of us? It's for well, Rebecca. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get the feeling that you have an answer to this question. Um, so we'll, we'll come back. Uh, I, I, so, uh, you know, Rebecca, do you have an answer for this one? Um, I think hmm, that it's, it's hard to find like one specific example really i think um it was kind of mo like different moments throughout the summer um one of them i might be like 
honestly, I don't know. There's just, there's a lot of moments that happened. Um, maybe it was um, us kind of helping Brittany through some of through some of summer with her being a freshman on top of everything else. Um, it it could be a lot of things, honestly. Okay. Um, uh, Marty, did you have something you wanted to add? Oh, no, I just, I honestly thought it was a question that was out there. Uh, then let's, let's go to, over to Camila. Do you want to introduce yourself? And, and then we'll, we'll ask you the same question. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm Camila Garcia Frausto. Uh, I'm a college student at Berkeley City College. I'm also another of the artists on this team. So I did uh, some of the background art as well as some of the, the animation work on this project. And yeah. So what did, what did you get out of the experience? Um, so at least for me personally, like, um, so this was only my second year within the program and uh, previously I did not have the best uh, experience with my team uh, or like the game we produced. So like this, uh, this past summer working with them was really like uh, eye opening. It was really uh, like, a, it was just a, a whole like new experience, just having like a functional team dynamic where you could uh, like we all just like clicked um like we all just clicked in our own different ways with each other and uh it, it just felt good because like having your work appreciated by like uh those within your team so uh, i'm sensing a theme amongst all of your answers here so i i take it that you agree with with um with rebecca when she says that you know one of the one of the valuable parts one of the valuable things that happened was that you were able to sort of um lift each other up elevate your strengths and prop up your weaknesses that that's something that you that resonates with you as well like that's what makes a good team right um do you have any any examples of where you think that 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 really played out for you yeah like um let me think i just had an example that i just blanked but um some oh like personally like uh like again as I said like I'm relatively new to the program like I'm this is going to be my third year so like uh I felt like I didn't have like all like as much experience as like some of the other people within the program so like I felt like a bit intimidated being on a team with Marissa I'm not gonna lie because she's been here just a little bit longer than I have but like uh being able to work with her like I uh like I'm, I'm not insecure about my art but like I was it really helped like uh, build mm -hmm. like my uh, uh, my strengths, like at least like being uh, more secure in like the way I like make my art and like present it to others. Cause like, uh, I just feel like prior to like working on this team, I just like, I, I just really keep my art to, like close to my chest and like didn't, didn't want anybody to like look at it. So like uh, working with Marissa and like working with other people on the team, it was just, uh just having like a bit more uh, like uh just being more mm. sure of myself more confident so would it be right to say or accurate to say that um you feel that you know have having a the experience of of having a as you say a functional team um is you know helped you have that confidence and that that security that you needed in order to show show your work really and that showing your work is the thing that is one of the things that helped you get better yeah yeah most most definitely because uh like just being in the program like it's helped a lot but like prior and especially after working with this team I'm just like I, I'm like I just keep my stuff very like I'm a very private person like not not gonna lie so like I keep uh very a lot of stuff to myself I don't like share a lot of stuff so like just working with them it's helped open up a lot um with regards to art and like other aspects of life 
So I would venture, if I were to venture a guess, um, I would guess that the, um, the amount of feedback, actionable feedback that you got from your team, like, you know, hey, could we do this or that? And that, that you were able to, that you were able to take in and, and use, um, that that was much higher than, than on other projects. That was my guess. <laughs> most, def most definitely. Um, and so is that, is that an experience, that, the experience of getting that feedback, of being in an environment where you could, you could actually get people to talk about your work and how, what you could change, um, is, that, is that something that you're going to be looking for? yeah yeah like uh again as i said i'm i'm a very uh private person so like i'm very defensive of like stuff i make so like prior to like working on this project i was very much like uh i would say like hard-headed <laughs> like i just was very stuck in my own ways not to say that i'm still not but it, it it's definitely helped with like aspects of that stubbornness <laughs> It's definitely opened you up to be more accepting of critique and and to really improve your art, right? Yeah, it's yeah. helped a lot with like receptiveness for sure. Yeah. So that brings us to uh, Brittany. Uh, can you share a little bit about who you are and um, what you got out of the process? Hello, my name is Brittany Matina. I am the level designer and sound designer for the game Camino. Um, I'm a first year at Sonoma State University. And what I've gotten out of this was a lot of guidance and a lot of motivation and, you know, continuing doing what I want to do without being scared of, without being scared of not getting critiqued if I'm wrong or incorrect, because I know I have my teammates to help me turn my wrongs into rights and help me able to question of if I need help or not and not be afraid of extending that hand and them helping me. So can you, can, can you think of a, a specific example where that played out for you? Um, it has to, since me and Bay are a teammate that wasn't available to join today, um, they were also a level designer and game designer. And so I worked closely a lot with them. Um, I was still rel relatively new to level designing and they were not saying better because they were, uh, but a veteran. And so if I needed uh, to visually see a certain way, uh, how my team wanted the, uh, they gave me ideas how they wanted a level to, the level to look like, I would um, go to Bay and they would explain to me and they would take as long as I needed for it to like kind of go through my head of how visually it would look like in the game and how I would bring that back to my teammates and say and what I needed from them so it could look visually and accurately correct while we were playing or simulating the game. So I lean it a lot on Bay for helping me you know understand some of the concepts like uh or getting inspiration from a lot of stealth games or doing or giving me guidance of like where to do my own research so i could have my own interpretation of certain things what what you know what do you think that um you got most out of the project um guidance i think i have to go back to that um mm -hmm whether it was level designing with Bay, I would got that, or I myself am, am an artist on my personal time. So I would get curious on how Camila or Marissa would do, you know, have their own art style and how would they would, you know, do certain things. Or I was never much of a computer science person, but you know, Rebecca explains it so much simpler that I can understand for someone who has no coding experience. And so sometimes now that when she talks in her high tech code, I could understand some of it. And like, if she does a joke, I can finally laugh at it because, you know, she basically dumped it down for me to understand. 
And so it's just the guidance in each um, aspect that my teammates play. They let me explore and open my horizons and not be afraid of like reaching out and see, hey, I'm kind of interested in this, whether we were teammates or not, like we were friends before this. All right, so maybe we can open up the conversation a little bit and jump around. So, um, uh, I, so I'm curious, Rebecca, um, given what, what Brittany just said, do you have a programming joke for us? <laughs> Thank you for the pre-laugh, Raymond. <laughs> uh, no reference exception. This is what's going on in my head. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'll take that. That's good. That's good enough one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, you know, I think that that the the theme here is clear, right? It it seems like everyone everyone um, you all felt that that the, the thing that made this experience special for you was the dynamic of the team. Um, whether it was that, you know, that you could actually have a functional team um, at all, um, but, uh, or it was that, you know, it was a, it was a particularly tough summer and, and getting through that required really having the strength of a team behind you. Um, but the, the lesson there that I gather from you was, you know, having, having a good team and a team dynamic means that you, you get to do your job better. Um, you, get to, you get to learn more. You get to be more open to, to share your work and to um, get actionable feedback. Um, you, get to be, you get to be less defensive when you have a, a good team. Um, so you get better at your job. Um, and it also helps you get through the part where you have to actually do the work. Um, even in spite of, of perhaps a, a very difficult time uh, last year. So, so um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to know, um, I guess I'd like to know uh, what, you know, what you're going to be specifically looking for um, you know, as you go out, as you finish school and you go out in the world and you know, you're doing whatever you go, whatever you're going to do, whether that's, you know, you're, you know, looking for, looking for a job in the industry or whatever you're going to end up doing. Um, and, and I know, um, Rebecca, you mentioned that you're interning at Double Fine here shortly. So, you know, given that lesson, given the strength behind that lesson for you, what are you going to be looking for? And anybody jump in. Okay, then Rebecca, you jump in because you're going straight to double five. What are you looking for there? What, what, how does this lesson apply there? Um, I think I'm, of course, looking for experience. That's kind of the main thing, but also looking for a good support system, just like here. Um, I, I do have a lot of good support at double five, which is kind of why this happened. Um, but I think a good, I think that's if that's something I've learned from all these years with game heads with some of the people in this call and that a game isn't as fun if you're not enjoying making it and the people you're making it with which is I think what I'm looking forward to um then Camila, do you want to add anything to that? Where, what are you going to take away? Um, yeah, similarly to like Rebecca, it's like, uh, like if you really look at it, making a game is like, it's like a chore. Like it's not, so, it's like on a technical side, it's not fun. It's like work and it's like, <laughs> no, really it, it's work. But like, you have to like find joy in like doing it. Like I find joy in like other creative avenues that I pursue outside of game heads like I, I do film I don't think filming itself it's fun but like the the actual you have to like find join anything and like 
similarly, like if it's not going to be fun if you're working with a group of people that it's like you you don't vibe with them or you you just you're just doing it to do it. It's like you need to find you need to like find either like a group of friends or like somebody or a group of people that uh, it's going to make the experience fun for you because otherwise it's just going to be it's going to be a chore it's like oh it's something I have to do or it's and it just sucks the joy out of it so I guess big piggyback off of that like so did this experience give you a different insight into the game making process because you, you started off saying it's a chore it's work it's hard it sucks right um so like how has this experience changed your outlook on that uh it's like definitely um it's definitely like I, I it's, it's more fun than what I had I, at least like my perception of it like after the first year because I was like my first year it was not fun <laughs> to say that just to say that but it's like um I I, I stuck through it because I was like I know I can get something else out of this and it's because uh, any like creative avenue that I've like pursued outside of game heads or even within it's like it's never fun at first like there's always like some type of learning curve and it's like you have to push like through that just to get to like the good parts so i mean i think what we want to take about um seven more minutes uh with with y'all and 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 help everyone know you a little bit better so so Ray, why don't you take us home? Ask, ask, ask away. Ask away. Uh, well, I, I think for me, it's it, you know that question about you know how did this experience change your outlook. Um, I also, like, want to know like what were some of the technical or like really hard challenges that you had to overcome while through this process, and like, and how did you pull that together? How did this? How did the team pull you through? Um, those challenges, like a concrete example. Is that for like anyone? That's for anyone, yeah. Oh, I think one thing that pulled us was being communicative. Um, summer of 2020 was really rough. And so everyone had their own type of emotions, but just communicating like, hey, today it's not gonna be my great day. I'm gonna do, you know, just this. And then the rest of the time, like, I think I'm just gonna lay low because of something happened in my family. Okay, thank you for telling us. Um, we'll communicate more with, in case like, if Marissa was having a bad day, we'll communicate more with Camila. And, you know, like if we have anything, we'll revert to her. And so when Marissa's back, like Camila can talk to Marissa and they can communicate how they would work and split the work up. Um, but it's just talking it out. Like I said before, I was transitioning to college, it was a whole mess. Um, but I let my team know like in advance, like, hey, it looks like I'm having a meeting with my college advisor. I won't be able to make it to the meeting, but I will be able to like, you know, I know like technically game heads ends, you know, at five, but you know, I could always stay like an extra hour or two so we can finish and pull through. Um, you guys don't have to con like, you know, overwork with me, even though sometimes they did. Um, but you know, always being open to conversation, and knowing like what's up, and you know, saying something and not being afraid. Rebecca, do you have an answer to that? Mine is more technical, and that is uh, learning how to do AI for stealth enemies <laughs> was a lot for me, because just mostly because I'd not delved that much into AI before. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of like tweaking, um, and like kind of going back and forth with my mentors that summer, along with you, Raymond, and just finally getting it to some place where like, oh, this works. This is not like the daunting task that I thought AI hey, was and like, it works. <laughs> cool. And now, now you learned, you learned a little something along the way too, I guess, right? <laughs> and I guess like on the on the art side you know I am I am not an artist right but I I was I'm wondering like what do you guys learn out of out of this process like how did how did your skills improve and which ways did it do like how did the team help you with that um, I think um learning how to 
sync up or at least uh, what do you call it coexist with another artist on the team and actually making sure that the work aligns you know where it's seamless between two art styles and um let's see thank goodness i don't have a defined art style because i could have never done this <laughs> giving myself the direction of that but um yeah in terms of uh it was challenging besides like remembering how to do like what knee passes which knee during a walk cycle um <laughs> sometimes you have to revisit the basics but um i think a lot of it was just like uh really defining the art style for a game and making it really i'm not gonna say defined but just making sure it pops out and is recognizable enough for it it's you know it's different to a degree or it's eye-catching you know has a little bit of those walk and vibes. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it just for the inside story on on the walk cycle, they're they're showing us the animations, and everybody was looking at the animation. Was like, is that dude walking backwards, right? And and, <laughs> and so yeah, so you fixed it. That's great. Uh, <laughs> and then I also had to like like record myself walking to give to give Camille like a reference so she could do like the skeleton animation for it. Right. So, you know. Going back to like the old school basics doesn't hurt either. Right. Yeah, but I don't think, uh, let's see. There was also the best animation in the game, which of course is the colonizer death animation. Yeah, there the was crispity, like- crispy, crunchy cr colonizer. <laughs> toasty from Peace of the Roads, yes. Yeah. Really fun, like drawing that actually. <laughs> I know Rebecca's mom loves it. She cackled when she first saw that animation when I played it for her. It was just like, okay. <laughs> like fully Wicked Witch of the East cackle. <laughs> uh, Raymond, since you're out handing out the questions, yeah. you know, like, or, like hors d'oeuvres, um, do you have any like narrative design questions or any narrative story questions for me? Oh, I, I guess that's a good, uh, thank you. Um, that's a good idea. So yeah, like what what was the inspiration actually behind behind the the narrative story of the game? Like where where did that come from? Um, I'd like to hear more about it. Um, aside from like it just being like, hey, let's have like you know an Afrocentric game. Um, it really stems from you know my cultural background, which I am Afro Cuban, and. Um, my dad, uh, I guess the story stands, you know, digging deeper from my dad because he left Uva when he was like 16 as still like a kid. And he was stranded out in a boat and like, you know, in the sea and it almost sank. So that kind of aspect of that, you know, a child being alone, fending, you know, out in the world, fending for himself really plays a heavy part in the protagonist's like, you know, mirrored story where you know a parental figure is taken away from them and they're on their own and they're scared and you know they're trying to survive and it's sort of where i try to encapsulate that element you know of my father's own story i guess into that yeah it, and i think that plays a big part into it too. like you feel that right you, and, and it goes into you feel it in the yeah. game, right? And you see that it, there's a cohesive nugget of, of um, story there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it feels good. Yeah. I, I'm like the emotion, art, and story department. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. I can say that with like a 200% assurance. And there's also just like the, how our gods, you know, my dad is like, he's a practice of, you know, the Orisha Yoruba faith. So it's like him telling me these stories and him, you know, being a, a traditional dancer for certain gods like Elagoa, which is like the god of life and death and trickster, which, you know, guides you on the path, you know, that you, you know, for Camino, um, which is also another word for, um, you know, walking with the Orishas in a way, which is, you know, it's another symbolic thing of the title, but, um, yeah, it's just definitely like wanting to also incorporate like his gods into the work because really is no game that has these kind of themes that isn't so broad, you know. 
Like he, mm. he's like, when I showed him this game, he like was like really like, oh my God, like there is no, I haven't seen a game like this because there are no Cuban games. Right. right. I think that's a, I mean, that's a great place for us to, to wrap this up. Um, I mean, it's a great description of, of, you know, what you were trying to capture. Um, it sounds like a great team to have captured that story with. Um, and it, it's, it seems like y'all took away some, some really good lessons from, from what you did that will impact, you know, what, who you want to work with and how you want to work going forward. Um, so awesome. Ray, do you want to figure out how we're going to, how we're going to close things up? I mean, you could just say thank you for coming and goodbye. Like that, 